between the Miami Hurt and then on offense Colin Klein has done everything he needs to do running the football making the decisions for his offense and then throwing the football through the air moving the moving the chains that's what's been the difference so far for Kansas State and Kansas State will get it first to start the half taken at the nine yard line by David Garrett and he gets it out to the 25 that zone read offense of Colin Klein you see the decision that defensive ends have to make it can't be right if the quarterback runs it correctly then the cutback off of it as the defense starts to over pursue been very impressed with Colin Klein we knew that he could run the ball like this effectively I'm not so sure that the Miami Hurricanes didn't underestimate the talent that Kansas State has on offense 109 through the air and a touchdown 63 rushing and a touchdown question was would he be able to handle the workload here again today after facing a couple of featherweight opponents the first couple of weeks well through a half year today the answer is yes on first down first play of the second half and it's a first down carry for John Hubert John Spence whips him down after a gain of 14 first half stats Brian and you see you look at the rushing yards pretty even the passing yards I think that's where you get a little bit surprised about how Kansas State has been able to move the football and then this is a key one right here six of eight on third down and the reason that Kansas State has been so successful is because they don't have to throw the ball every time on third down they can run and convert and keep the chains moving. Play fake. Klein left exposed, got rid of it in time. And it's going to be about an eight yard pickup. Chris Harper brings up second down and two. I know in that locker room at halftime, the defensive coaches, Al Golden, Mark D'Onofrio, their message to this defense was we have not gotten to the quarterback enough. We need to hit this quarterback. If he's going to run with the football, we have got to be more physical and get hits on him to wear him down in the second half. And Jomo made a pretty good hit on Klein there. But the hit from the first half by Perryman on Klein, it seemed to only inspire him. There's another first down run for John Huber. To the 45-yard line of Miami, a gain of seven and a first down. Let's go back to the first half, and here's that hit that Klein took. Yeah, if you're going to run the ball against Miami, you're going to get some hits, and that certainly was a big one, and that's the kind of stuff that, uh, that the Miami defense wants to continue to do, but Colin Klein is a tough customer. He's a big kid, 226 pounds. He obviously can take it. Yeah, it wasn't long after that that he picked up that big first down after they were backed up to the goal line. And four penalties in a row. Klein has shown some moxie here today. On first down. Thought about running, now wants to throw. Has an open receiver. It's caught by Sheldon Smith. On his feet for a first down, down to the 32-yard line. Nicholas finally brings him down, but it's a gain of 13. And K-State will move the chains one more time. That's the option Colin Klein has to run or to throw the slip screen, but the delay... I wonder if the offensive line was downfield. You see these guys down the field. If he throws that ball at that point, you've got a four-yard window there. It was close. When the timing of the screens are interrupted, that's when you get linemen downfield penalties. And uh, But a good read by Colin Klein to flip the ball out there. First down at 10 from the 32 of Miami. It's Hubert straight ahead. He stood up after a two-yard gain. He's already got 24 yards here on three carries in the second half after 18 total yards in the first half. And you take a look at Colin Klein's jersey there. He's bleeding from his elbows. Jersey's all. <laughs> he's going to earn everything he's gotten. He's gotten quite a bit today through the air. Season high for him, 131 yards, but uh, not without uh, a lot of effort taking some shots. People said Eastern Kentucky, Kent State, yeah, yeah, but we'll see what you can do on the road at Miami. Well, they have not been intimidated thus far. Klein, the zone read again, gives it to Hubert. And he'll pick up about three more to bring up third and about five. 
Marcus Robinson making the tackle for the Hurricanes. Another thing, Brian, that Miami has been unable to do is turn K-State over. And with all the handoffs and the late handoffs between Klein and his backs, you'd think that at some point they might be able to get that to happen. Well, give credit to Kansas State offensively. They're taking care of the football. They're not taking chances with it. And Colin Klein is managing his offense. Six third down conversions today for the Wildcats. Klein makes the change. Five on the play clock. Got it off in time. Klein flushed. Looking downfield. Nothing down there. And he's going to be dropped for a loss by Sean Spence. The Miami native. The pride of Northwestern High School. It's a loss of three yards. Don't underestimate the importance of this opening defensive stand for the Miami Hurricanes. If they were to give up a... A touchdown on this first drive, that would be demoralizing coming out after halftime being down 14 to 3. Good coverage on the back end, give the secondary credit, and then Sean Spence, the leader of this defense, comes up and makes a big play. Cantelli comes on trying to knock through a 46 yarder. He's got a long this year of 49 from the far hash. It's no good. Yeah, somebody got a finger on it to slow that one down. And the Miami defense can feel pretty good coming off the field. Some, somebody ran through the middle there. May have been Buchanan. Got a finger on that ball, but a big was Buchanan. Clay Maffick, Brian Greasy, Allison Williams back here in Miami. Kane's going back to work on offense, down 11. They pitch it to Lamar Miller, looking for room on the near side. None there. Arthur Brown shoots in to make the stop. No gain. Let's go down to Allison. Guys, I talked to the Hurricanes' Al Golden after the half. He said offensively they need to hit the X plays. They need to hit those deep throws down, big plays. He said... Kansas State is stacking the box up front, so it's they've struggled to run the ball a little bit. But when they do that, you just have to hang in there and be patient because the big plays are open. Guys, so far Miami only has one play of 15 or more yards. That first drive resulted in a field goal. The last three. Two punts and an interception. There is a big play. That's what Al Golden wanted. Alan Hearns. He has been quiet up to now. David Garrett making the tackle in the secondary, but it's a gain of 29, the biggest play of the afternoon for the Canes. And you're going to see that the safeties come up to try to stop the run. Watch the safety here come up. And behind it, Alan Hearns on the post route and a good, accurate throw from Ja'Cory Harris. It's critical that Harris gets on a roll. He's a very streaky quarterback. If he gets on a roll, he'd be hard to stop. You see the numbers for Harris. Now he's up over 100 yards passing. Miller gets it. They have kept him bottled up. Steps out of a tackle. They work him out of bounds finally, but it's just a two-yard gain. Trey Walker is going to get credit with the tackle there. What has K-State done to keep him quiet? Well, they're bringing, the, as Allison said, the coach Golden said, bring in the eighth guy into the box. That's how you stop guys like Lamar Miller. You stack up the box with one more than they can block, and then you, you count on that guy making the tackle, and the only way to combat that is to throw the football on the outside. Hearns, Streeter, Benjamin, they're getting single coverage outside on a down-in and down-out basis. James is in. Miller on the sideline for now. Harris, three-step drop, quick throw to Streeter. He made his first career start here today. Picks up five. It'll bring up third down. And in this offense, in this Jed Fish style pro offense, that's what you're going to have to do. you got to take what the defense gives you. If they play off coverage on the outside, a five-yard hitch is a positive play. Gets you into third and four where it's manageable. But you can't try to force the issue against this Kansas State defense. Third down and a long three. Two for six on third down today are the Canes. Harris away from center. Has time. Lots of time. Over the middle. Man wide open at the 12. Philip Dorsett. Inside the five. A 32-yard play. First down and goal Miami. Kansas State decided to play two deep coverage. Nobody was open. Look, all these receivers are covered. Nowhere to go with the football. Great protection. 
buy some time and a great job on the inside by Dorsett of finding the open space and then making the big catch. Dorsett from nearby Fort Lauderdale went to St. Thomas Aquinas High School. The rookie puts him on the doorstep. Harris to the end zone. Touchdown, Tommy Streeter. And the Canes are back in this one. You talk about the importance of momentum. Come out and you stop them on defense. You get a block by Buchanan of the field goal attempt. Then you get the ball on offense, go right down the field, make good decisions, make two big plays, and you're right back in this football game. White Claw's extra point, and it's a four-point game now. Tommy Streeter, the cousin and high school teammate of Ja'Cory Harris with his second career TD catch. to come around it finally did with a beautiful drive two explosive plays on that drive one of 29 yards and another of 32 that's what Al Golden was looking for big plays finally from this offense yeah, and Ja'Cory Harris 4-4 four, four. don't let gotta have short-term memory can't be thinking about the first half and how things went we've got a job to do come back in this football game in the second half Wyclaw backs Garrett to the one yard line and Garrett covered up at the 17 where this team has really come to life. Monday's on ESPNU. It's the Palmer and Pollock Show. They're going to look back and look ahead in an entertaining three-hour college football forum. They don't always uh, agree either. It's kind of entertaining. ESPNU at 1 and 9 Eastern every Monday. Now this defense, which stopped Kansas State after Kansas State moved into Miami, ter Miami territory and forced them into a field goal attempt, which they missed, is back out there. They've got energy from this offense, too. You can bet on it. Well, they're, they're going to be tested. I don't think Colin Klein is going to wilt in this pressure. I think he'll thrive. Klein throws to the flat, looking for a screen. Sheldon Smith is hammered and buried inside the 10 by Sean Spence. I think we see early on in the second half of this game the adjustments by Miami defensively. They're going to put pressure on the perimeter. They're not going to allow easy bubble screens and slip screens. They're going to get up in the face of these Kansas State wide receivers and challenge them. That's the, that's the adjustment that D'Onofrio made at halftime, and so far it's working in the second half. Hubert will line up as a wide receiver to the top of your screen. Second down and 10 for Klein. Klein chased. Batted down, incomplete. Marcus Robinson swatted that out of the air. Starting to bring a little bit of pressure. They smell a little bit of momentum changing in the direction of the orange jerseys. And D'Onofrio and Al Golden dialing up some more pressure. Get the fans into this game early in the second half. Expect more pressure here in third and ten inside the 20-yard line. K-State has been solid on third down today. And now a timeout called for by Klein. The play clock was getting dangerously close to expiring again. Timeout on the field, 6.40 to go in the quarter. Miami has all the energy now. After the timeout, the Miami fans getting behind this Canes defense on a Kansas State third and 10 from their own 17. Hubert steps up, 
He's got enough for the first down and more. Out across the 30 to the 31, a run of 14 for the slick Kansas State quarterback. And that's the second time now, backed up in their own end, that Colin Klein has been able to convert third and long. And this Miami defense just continuing to give up opportunities to change momentum. Give credit to the offensive line blocking up front. This defensive line of Miami is not able to get off blocks. You see the frustration from Forsen and another big hit from Colin Klein, but he's right back up, ready for more. And take it from center, B.J. Finney, and this time hand it off to Hubert, who bounces to the outside and finds a lane. Ball comes out. Miami says they have it. And it looks like they're going to rule him down. It's a 15-yard run for Hubert. And Kansas State can wipe the sweat from their brow. They almost turned it over here, it appeared. Yeah, Robinson had a hold of Hubert and took him to the ground. The knees down and then the elbows down. Everything's down yeah. and the ball comes out. But another big running play on first down for Kansas State, who's picking up yardage in chunks now. Got it out to their own 47-yard line. Another first down here for Klein and K-State. Harper goes in motion. Zone read handoff again to Hubert. And another lane. A big yardage run for Hubert. Down inside the 10-yard line. Nicholas finally caught up to him from behind. He almost took that to the house. A 48-yard run for John Hubert. And you have big plays like this. The second level gets caught looking in the backfield. Watch the secondary players for Miami. One goes in the opposite direction, does not take a good angle. The other one gets blocked on the edge, and that's what allows Hubert to make a big play. Hubert now 109 yards on the ground. He was held to 29 by Kent State just last week. And that run for Robert Rose. He's going to pick up little, maybe a half yard. So second down and goal to go for Kansas State. That is the first run for Rose today. He's a Miami native. Yeah, and certainly you get down here, you're going to need a little bit bigger back. Hubert's not the kind of back to be in too many goal line situations. But if you're Miami now, they got to start flipping that switch. No matter how the offense gets down there, they've got to find a way to keep him out of the end zone in only a four-point game. Snap to Klein. Gives it to Rose. And he tiptoes inside the five-yard line down to the two. It's a three-yard pickup. Anthony Chicolo, the backup defensive end on that side, makes the tackle. So now third and goal to go for Kansas State. Last time we saw Kansas State having success in this area, it was not the running back with the football. It was Colin Klein. He's the big back that is able to finish in the end zone. Expect him to keep the ball here. With that said, Hubert is behind him, and a timeout being called for from that Kansas State sideline. And that is the second used timeout here of the half, one remaining for the Wildcats. Big play coming up when we return. Let's uh, get a studio update with Dari. Boy, did you see how excited Dabo Sweeney was last week? If they get this win over Florida State, he'll lose his mind. Isn't that great? That's that's what's great about college football. I love when coaches are out there high-fiving and chest-bumping and being happy for their players. That's what this game's all about. He made a great comment to Aaron Andrews uh, this week about that very thing. He said, you know what? This is a great job. I'm going to enjoy the victories. You see so many coaches internalizing that and thinking about the next game as soon as the uh, gun sounds. Dabo Sweeney is not that way. It's a great lesson uh, to, to teach your players. And I think Al Golden and, and Bill Snyder do the same thing. And uh, I think college football needs to be more about fun and less about you know, the pressures. And that's kind of what Ja'Cory Harris has de dealt with. But right here, Colin Klein's got the pressure on his shoulders because he's the one guy probably going to keep this football. Braden Wilson, the fullback, is in there next to Klein. On third and goal, Klein pop pass to the end zone. Touchdown Wildcats, Travis Tannehill on a nifty play. Paul and 
Klein looked like a basketball guard shooting a jumper from the free throw line. This is his best Tim Tebow imitation. It's what Tim made famous. And Tannehill just slips behind for an easy touchdown. When you have a running quarterback, that element comes into your red zone and goal line offense, and it's very effective. And the extra point by Cantelli. Huge response by the Kansas State offense after Miami recuperated and got back in this football game. Very impressive drive. You look at the linebacker right here will come up and actually hit the tight end and he'll just kind of sleep and then get behind him for an easy throw for Colin Klein. He actually almost got <laughs> that's a great catch oh. from Tannehill. That ball was was not easy to catch. You don't know who's going to hit you in there and the linebacker already hit him and he still had the presence to turn around and catch that ball looking back into the sun almost like a center fielder. Second career touchdown catch for Tannehill and what a great use of a timeout to come out with that play totally caught Miami off guard. Yeah, you're right. I mean, some people would criticize you don't want to waste your timeouts in the third quarter. They only got one left. But if you remember on that third down, they came out initially with Klein under center, which would tell you he's probably going to hand the football off. They came out after the timeout in the shotgun, which allows them to run the ball with Klein or to play that play pass. I thought it was a very good decision by Bill Snyder. So Miami on their first possession of the half was 71 yards for a touchdown, but Kansas State responds with an 83-yard drive of their own. And Benjamin gets it out to the 21 as Ja'Cory Harris and the offensive unit come back out. You know, we were talking with Al Golden yesterday, and he said that he wanted to find out a lot about his team today. How are they going to play after an emotional win last week? I think the pressure that has been applied so far by Kansas State. They have raised a level of intensity. And now, what is this Miami Hurricane team going to do? As you said, they've been hitting them out. They're down 11 points. There's no more time left. They've got to start responding now. Lamar Miller. In the backfield, they play fake to him. Harris throws. It's complete out to the 38-yard line to Benjamin. Another big play. It's a gain of 20. Malone, the tackle in the secondary, is... It's a first down for the Canes. We haven't called Travis Benjamin's name enough tonight. Get him in the open field with off coverage. Allow him to get down the field and throw him the ball. He's too explosive. He makes too many big plays on a consistent basis not to be involved in the offense. Coming up on three minutes to go in the quarter. Lamar Miller finds the scene. He will go all the way. Touchdown, Lamar Miller. A 59-yard run. Longest career run for Lamar Miller, and he's already had some big ones this year. We were wondering if Lamar Miller was healthy. He was on the sideline trying to stretch out his leg, but he certainly looked healthy there as he pulled away from Kansas State in the secondary. Back to a four-point game. You've heard the phrase playing possum, haven't you? Maybe that's what Miller was doing. <laughs> Well, a lot of people have compared him to Clinton Portis, and you're going to see why. Just freeze it right there. The decision now to cut back. You see the blocks on the, both sides. That kind of vision and the ability to have quick feet to find that hole. That's what Clinton Portis did so well for Miami years ago, and that's why Lamar Miller is making plays for the Hurricanes today. He gets up into the feet of the offensive line, and that's what forces the linebackers and secondary to declare. It gives the offensive lineman a chance to get on their blocks, and then Miller is able to make the cutback for the touchdown. That puts him up over 100 yards. Fifth career 100-yard game for Lamar Miller. Remember, 
his goal for the season, 1,000 yards rushing. He keeps this up. He's going to get well over that. Another short kick off the toe of Jake Wyclaw. Stepping up, fielding it on the hop is Lockett. And to the 25-yard line. Celebrating its seventh year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate making contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point. Allstate has contributed more than $2.4 million in scholarship money. All right, now it's uh, Kansas State's serve. Yeah, and you know, Kansas State is doing it a little bit different fashion. That was a big play drive from Miami offensively. Two plays. 40, uh, 79 yards and Kansas State has been doing it in a more methodical fashion but what that does is it chews up the time of possession and protects this, their defense. Bryce Brown is in the backfield on first down from the 25. Klein play fake getting heat from behind and brought down at the 17. Was Jordan Futch, number 58, the Sam linebacker, a loss of eight. Miami's not going to sit back any longer. You see all 11 players defensively up around the line of scrimmage. No safeties. They're bringing people from the weak side, and they get to Colin Klein. Miami is not going to sit back any longer. Mark Denofrio, defensive coordinator, feels like they have got to press the issue and get to Colin Klein before he gets to them. Third sack today by that Miami defense. Second and 18. Klein, the read, keeps it. And he'll plunge ahead. He's about a yard short of the original line of scrimmage. There is Sean Spence again. Gain of five. This is the third time now Kansas State has been backed up in their own end with a third and long situation. They've converted each of the first two times with Colin Klein running the football. Bill Snyder's going to give it to him again, in my opinion. The question is, is Miami going to be able to stop? Klein, 133 passing, 108 rushing. They've been good on third down, 7 of 11. Checking off because the blitz is coming. He sees it. Miami's got seven in the box right now. Here comes the heat. Klein gets away. Looking downfield, slips out of his hands and out of bounds. Fourth down for Kansas State. Raymond Buchanan in pursuit. A loss of seven on that play. Last two times they've been in that situation, Miami decided to play safe. I think they're done with that. They threw that out the window. They're going to start pressuring on a consistent basis. That time they manned up on the outside, nowhere for him to go, and they got pressure on Mark on Colin Klein. That Miami defense, I think, taking that first half personally. They did not give up a touchdown to number 17, Ohio State, last week. Well, K-State came out here today and got two in the first half. They have really changed since halftime. Heads up for Benjamin. Door, the punt from inside is 10. Pretty good one, too. Benjamin from the 33, giving up ground, cutting back. He's got the sideline. And Door, the punter, makes a big tackle at midfield. 49-yard punt, 17-yard return to the studio and Dari. Evening again, guys. All right, Dari, thank you very much. Travis Benjamin giving Miami very good field position at their own 49-yard line. Down four. Harris, time to throw, comes to the near sideline, complete to Streeter. Streeter with a touchdown here in the second half. Garrett worked him out of bounds, but it's a gain of 14, and a Miami first down as they're into plus territory. I love the play call on first down. If you're going to win this game, Jed Fish has got to trust that Ja'Cory Harris can make the right decisions. They're seeing eight-man boxes on a consistent basis on first down. Can't run into that. you got to throw the ball on the outside on first down. He did throw that pick in the first half, but here in the second half, he has been superb. And 
that's going to end the third quarter. Al Golden all fired up on that Miami sideline. He has been pleased with what he has seen from his Canes here in the second half. Kansas State still has the lead, but the momentum right now belongs to this Miami football team. Eventually, Miami did kick a field goal to start the scoring, but K-State has led for the balance of this game. But right now, Miami driving for what would be the go-ahead score. Miller. On second down, picks up a handful. David Garrett making the tackle. So second down and six coming up. Here's our game summary. Colin Klein's been the story for Kansas State. Three touchdowns responsible for. And the, the surge back, 14 points in the third quarter for Miami. And I, I guarantee you that Al Golden is trusting that his conditioning team is going to persevere in this fourth quarter with this hot, humid day here in South Florida. Harris on second and eight pumps has a lot of time going deep to the end zone touchdown Travis Benjamin there is a penalty marker down a penalty marker down in the backfield but it appears that it's against Kansas State Think you're going to get a roughing the passer penalty. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 56. The penalty being forced on the succeeding kickoff. is open to play as a touchdown. Alex Rebeck with a roughing the passer call. A 34-yard touchdown strike. Al Golden talked. We need the big play. They've gotten the big play. Consistently now in the second half, Ja'Cory Harris took a big shot. Looks like he's going to be okay. Great route by Travis Benjamin. And Jake Wyclaw is true on the extra point. It's 24-21. Miami's first lead since the first quarter. They wanted to run the double move on the outside. It wasn't there. He made the adjustment to the inside. And Ja'Cory Harris bought just enough time to get that ball off. Big play. Ja'Cory Harris has led Miami on three touchdown drives here in the second half. All of 50 yards or more. Say what you will about Ja'Cory Harris. He throws a lot of interceptions, but he does not stop competing. He is a competitor down through and through. And on that last throw, that's what you want from him. That's what he brings to the table. Extend plays, sit in the pocket, take a big shot, and deliver the mail. He did it to perfection on the last throw. And this one is kicked through the back of the end zone. Let's go to the studio in Dari. Anybody know the name Clint Trickett coming in this season? They've talked a lot about his physique this week, but can't he can really throw a pass, can he? Can't measure heart. On first down, a little misdirection. Lockett coming out of the backfield and right into the arms of the defense. Marcus Robinson awaiting. And it's a one-yard pickup, second down to nine. Let's go down to Allison. Guys, I just have to say, every time Colin Klein comes off the field, he heads over to the trainer's table to have something else stitched up, bandaged up. He was bleeding from his throwing arm about his elbow. He was bleeding from his non-throwing arm on his hand. The kid is banged up. He's moving the ball, but he's taking a beating while he's doing it. The junior out of Loveland, Colorado, serves a purple heart today. He is playing through it. On second and nine, Hubert to the outside, and he is going to be stopped just short of the first down. Hubert putting his head down and running hard for eight. Looks like this Miami defense starting to play a little bit more physical. They are not just tackling guys. They are taking them to the ground hard. Buchanan, Perriman at the linebacker position. Robinson, they are coming after Kansas State, and this is a big third and short here. And Miami can get a stop after that big momentum changer touchdown. Be significant. They crowd the box. Look at that. They anticipate the run. Klein checks. You crowd the box. You exposed on the edge. Klein takes it to the edge. The pitch, and there is Hubert with a lot of room. 
gets away from a tackle. Up the sideline and out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Brandon McGee made the tackle. There is a penalty marker down. Let's see if this comes back. You stack all those guys up in and around to stop the quarterback sneak. Look at all of them there. Nowhere for him to go. So he audibles to the option. Great call at the line of scrimmage. And clearly there's weakness on the edge of that defense. Great recognition by Colin Klein and good effort by Hubert. 47-yard run for Hubert. He's now at 163 on the day. And K-State, which was looking for a running back coming into this game, may have found it. Well, John Huber, give him credit. He, he you know his record he broke in high school in Waco, Texas? Yards in a season? No. Initials L-T. With Damian Tomlinson. He is a special back. Don't give uh, John Huber maybe the future here at Kansas State. Klein cuts it up. And a good run to the 15, maybe a little further. Just shy of another Kansas State first down. They're back in the red zone. And every time Kansas State takes a punch, they pull themselves up off the mat. Give them credit. They are well coached. There's tremendous effort going on in this football game on both sides of the football. This game has gone back and forth, punch, counter punch. And again, Miami Hurricanes find themselves in a red zone situation where they have not been able to stop Kansas State from getting in the end zone. So second down and one. Maybe less than that. Oh, ball comes out. Loose football. K-State has recovered. Oh, my. That was out for a long time before somebody found it down around everybody's feet. It's a Kansas State lineman. B.J. Finney, the center, recovered for the Wildcats. Watch the exchange between here. That ball came out of the hand of Colin Klein before it got to Hubert. And Kansas State, again, fortunate. That's the second time there's been a fumble that they've fallen on. And you can see the ball never got into the pocket of Hubert. And again, I think it's the humidity on the ball. It's very slick when it gets this hot and humid. 245 yards on the ground for the Wildcats. This is Robert Rose with the run. Stopped at the 10-yard line, a two-yard game. And you know Kansas State is living right. Go back to that last play. Not only did they fumble that ball, but they fumbled it forward and got a first down. <laughs> so they are, they are, ball is bouncing in Bill Snyder's direction, certainly. And Colin Klein's got another cut on his hand. He is he's beat up. He's going to spend a lot of time in the MASH unit this week when they get back to Manhattan. Second down and eight. Miami crowd coming to the back of this Miami defense. Zone read again. Klein looking to cut it up and finds another seam. Bouncing off tacklers. He's got a first down and nearly a touchdown. <laughs> A nine-yard gain. It's first down and goal to go. I don't think I've ever seen smash-mouth football from a quarterback like this. Watch this in full speed. He's patient, and then he hits the hole, and then he refuses to go down. Still pushing toward, takes the official down with him, and Colin Klein, you got to give him credit. He gets the All Heart Award for this game. Well, you, mentioned, you compared him to Tebow on that pop pass. That yeah. certainly was Tebow S. To Hubert, and he walks into the end zone. Touchdown, John Hubert. A two-yard touchdown run, and Kansas State regains the lead. Eleven straight running plays by the Wildcats. And that was an attitude drive. That was an answer to the. Big play from the Hurricanes, touchdown. Their defense had an opportunity to come out and make a stop, and the offensive line really took that drive over and refused to be stopped. Well, important extra point. Make it a four-point game again, and Cantelli does. Hubert now 
165 yards rushing and a touchdown as he takes it in from two yards out. Kansas State answers back again here on the road. ESPNU College Football All-State Game of the Week. Brought to you by All-State. Dollar for dollar. Nobody protects you from mayhem like All-State. And the Capital One Venture Card with double miles on every purchase every day. Kansas State running back John Hubert has his jersey off. I don't know whether that's to uh, clean up the jersey, maybe to make a repair or to just cool off. But that was his first career touchdown run. And it's the first rushing touchdown by someone not named Colin Klein this year for Kansas State. As the Wildcats regain the lead, here's Travis Benjamin. The dangerous return man cutting back. Penalty flagged down. He's across the 30 and out around the 35-yard line. Actually, a couple of penalty flags down. Actually, looked like there was somebody on the sideline of Kansas State that was on the field trying to, I don't know whether it was a coach or a ball boy or something, but somebody was on the field. This one's the correct spot. There are multiple fouls on the play during the return. Holding on the return team number two. And it will be declined. Leave a block in the back on the return team, number 52. That penalty will be enforced. 10 yard penalty, first down. All right, let's go to the studio for an update with Dart. Yeah, they've uh, had a tough schedule to start the season. All right, so after the penalties, Miami is backed up to its own 13 yard line. Corey Harris out of the gun. Looking to throw on first down. Has time to do so. Over the middle deep. Man wide open, but he was overshot. Tommy Streeter racing up the field, and Harris uh, threw it about two to three yards over. We talked again about them squatting on routes this time. He's playing in two deep coverage and allows Streeter to go right over the top, and that is a missed opportunity. Ja'Cory Harris just threw it a little bit too far for Streeter. This is the big play that Miami has found now in the second half. They're averaging 18 yards per play in the second half. Opposed to the first half, where they're only averaging 4.9 yards a carry. So they have found their big-time offense in the second half. In the flat, this is Miller. Oh, man. That was a great tackle by Arthur Brown. We have seen Miller, how dangerous he can be here in the early season when he gets into space. And K-State has done a good job with the open field tackles today. Yeah, Arthur Brown certainly has the speed to get out there on the outside. And he's very familiar with how fast Lamar Miller is. It took the right angle from being his teammate uh, last year with the Hurricanes. He understands. And now yep. brings up a big third and seven now for Miami and Ja'Cory Harris. You've got to be smart with the football here. Down four. And we're under nine minutes to go. I believe the biggest play of the game up to this point. Harris complete. There's Benjamin for the first down. Ty Zimmerman, the tackle, a gain of 12, and the drive stays alive for the Canes. Looked like Kansas State had some miscommunication in the secondary on that last play. You see there's two receivers over here and nobody in underneath coverage. The nickelback went to the other side of the field, which allowed for a big hole for Benjamin, and this was an easy pitch and catch with no underneath coverage. Good recognition by Benjamin and good conversion by Harris. And they go back to the ground. Here's Miller. And... Might be a, a loss of a half yard as Miller is slow to get up. And you have noticed several times Miller, you know, physically working on something on the sidelines when he's had an opportunity to do that. Now he's uh, hobbled going yeah. back to the sideline. That again. looks like a left shoulder there. Looks like he has a wrap on underneath there already. But uh, he is, you'll see, he'll take a hit on the left shoulder here from the inside. Sometimes it just takes a little bit, and that 
certainly that's not feeling good for Lamar Miller on the sideline. It's been a hard hitting game on both sides. Klein's taken a lot. Miller certainly has too. Second and ten. Stepping out of the pocket and running ahead close to the 35 yard line is Ja'Cory Harris. A gain of seven so it'll be third down and manageable for the Canes coming up. But Great. Miller's on the sideline. Great decision by Ja'Cory Harris again. Nobody open downfield. You don't try to force the ball. You get six, seven yards on second and ten. Brings up a manageable third down situation. Those, those are the things that Jed Fish wants to see the growth from Ja'Cory Harris. I thought it was interesting. Al Golden said, you know, sometimes we don't allow guys to grow. And that's what they're trying to allow Ja'Cory Harris to do is grow into this offense and become a leader, become a better football player. 50% on third down conversion attempts today. Harris is going to try to run for it, and he's not going to get there. Adam Davis wrapping him up. A transfer from Hutchinson Community College in Kansas, making a big play in this football game. And K-State's set to get it back here. Yeah, if he got past Davis, there was a lot of room to run, and Davis was a tremendous pass rusher in junior college. Kansas State was very fortunate to get him, but he made a big play there to save the stop for the defense. Tremaine Thompson back deep for Kansas State. The punt by Botts. Fair catch. Fielded at the 26-yard line. That's a 40-yard kick. Kansas State maybe 6-16 away from an upset. Brian Greasy, Allison Williams back here in Miami. Kansas State leading by four with 6.16 to go. So they've got the lead and the football. They start at their own 26-yard line. And as you would expect, they keep it on the ground to John Hubert. They'll get a yard or two. Hubert on that last drive, instrumental, 58 yards and the touchdown. An impressive drive it was to eight plays, 80 yards. Maybe of all the drives of the day, the most impressive yeah. for either team. Yeah, because of all the running, and now 17 of the last 18 plays for Kansas State on offense have been runs. I think you need to be careful here that you don't just, you know, run the power play in between the tackles. Allow Colin Klein to read the defense. You're going to have to get some first downs here to ice this game, so don't take the ball out of your best running back's hands, and that's your quarterback. Klein steps back into the gun. High snap. Zone read again. Klein keeps and doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third down and 10. Brought the pressure from the outside. Spence came on the edge. They're going to force the issue. That time Spence decides, oh, I'm just going to take the halfback and hopefully somebody will take the quarterback. It's very difficult to know who's going to have that ball, but Sean Spence says, I'm just going to shoot my gun and see what happens. Huge play in this game. What does Kansas State draw up here? I think you got to be, be careful. They've converted twice in this kind of situation with Colin Klein running the football. I think you do the same. Play clock under five. Klein. Wants to run, nothing downfield, and gets it to the 30. Ball comes out again. And again, it looks like Kansas State recovered. Wow. How fortuitous has the Wildcats been today recovering fumbles. They've put it on the ground three times in this ball game, and each time they have come up with the recovery. Looks like I think that would have been a fumble had they, yeah. it is a fumble. If Miami would have recovered that, it would have been their football. Spence knocked it out, and it looked like Nick Pitts, number 50, the left guard, recovered it for Kansas State. Kansas State hasn't turned it over in 11 and a half quarters. They almost did there, and gave Miami won on a platter. A rugby-style punt by Doerr, and it's out of bounds. A very poor punt by Ryan Doerr, who is usually spot on. There's Ja'Cory Harris. Can he lead Miami back again? The Canes have it when we come back. So we'll see if uh, he gets a chance here tonight. There is Ja'Cory Harris, 9 for 10, 154, and two touchdowns. He has been great in the second half. Those are second-half numbers. 
Lamar Miller has been banged up here in this game. He's in the backfield with Harris. Great field position after a 20-yard punt by K-State's Ryan Dorr. They have it at their own 49. Harris throws on first down to Benjamin coming back to the football. He'll pick up three or four quickly wrapped up by Arthur Brown. This is where you need your focus and you need your patience. You've got three and a half minutes left in this ball game. Plenty of time. You're down four. You got all three of your timeouts. There's no need to rush here, but you've got to make sure you make good decisions. You get positive plays. Sacks in this situation are killers. You've got to maintain your poise and composure and get the ball down the field. Harris has not been sacked yet. Out of the gun. Good uh, protection. The throw over the middle. Has a receiver. Caught at the 21 by Chase Ford. And he falls inside the 15-yard line. That's a gain of 33 on that play. Great nerves from Ja'Cory Harris. This is a tight fit. Just a tight end down the middle of two deep coverage. And Ford didn't get open by much, but the ball was just thrown so perfectly. And the thing that's impressive about that is Ja'Cory Harris, despite what everything has been going on and said about him, he is not afraid to pull the trigger. And we've seen that in the second half here where he has been outstanding. 272 through the air for Harris. First down from the 14, it's Miller. Modest pickup. Second down and eight coming up. Volker making the tackle for Kansas State. Now you make a good point there, Brian. I mean, Harris booed by many of these fans over the last couple of years, even in this game today, and now he has a chance to be the hero. Yep, and they need him. They need. They have needed him to get back in this football game, and they will need him here in the red zone because it looks like Lamar Miller is not quite the Lamar Miller at 100%. He's the setback. Ooh, almost fumbling it is Harris when he came away from center. Got it to Miller. And no gain. Third down and eight. You might want to use your timeout here. As we're under two minutes. Two timeouts remaining for Miami. And a terrible punt by Kansas State setting up this drive. Miami has been able to take advantage of good field position here in the second half at times. And now, what are they talking about in this timeout, Brian? Well, you got to figure out a way to get a first down. It's third down now, uh, and you've got plenty of space now to get to the four-yard line to get a first down and buy yourself at least three more, maybe four more shots at the end zone. But uh, I think right here, you got to be careful that you don't try to force the football. You're in four-down territory. So even if you get three or four yards, you know that coming back, you're going to have a fourth down opportunity. Ja'Cory Harris, 21 completions, 30 attempts, 272. A couple of touchdown throws. He did throw the first half pick, but he has been able to brush that off. And you see what they have done today on third downs. Four of nine and a huge one coming up, third and nine. I think what Jed Fish likes to do here is call two plays and allow Ja'Cory Harris to orchestrate at the line of scrimmage which play looks best. Looks like Kansas State's got no safety and a pressure look. Heads up for the slip screen on the top. Here comes that rush. Harris has time to the end zone. Incomplete, but a flag. Nigel Malone is going to be called for pass interference. Kansas State brought every single rusher they could and had man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. And... Ja'Cory Harris saw it, wanted to go to his big receiver, Streeter. Pass interference, defense number 24. And Nigel Malone at 5'10", 176 pounds, has been all over the big receivers for Miami all game. That time, the contact while the ball was in the air is what drew the flag. And a big first down for the Miami Hurricanes. So now first down and goal to go. And Al Golden is going to go with a three tight end set here. James is the tailback. They're going to bring in Smash. Calhoun the lead back. And they're going to throw. 
Incomplete. Almost caught by Clyde Walford. Boy, the way that that was set up, you expected the run. Well, when they bring the tight end in, in counter motion, as we call it, they wanted to get him in the flat. This is a, a gotcha play in man coverage on defense. The guy trailing the tight end in motion, you try to get the ball to the, to the tight end before he gets to the football, and they're just a low throw. If that throw is accurate, Warford had a touchdown. And now Al Golden is going to bring out another tight end. Cleveland, Ford, and Walford out there, and Calhoun, the fullback. Second and goal. It's James. Stood up at the one-yard line and pushed back. Third down. Trey Walker with a big stop for Kansas State. Here's where you go in on your goal line sheet. As a play caller, you find the best play you got. Whatever you felt best about during the week, whether it's a runoff tackle or whether it's play action, you've got to call your best play here, knowing that if you don't get it, you're going to go for it on fourth down anyway. Calhoun again in front of James. James stopped again. Jack Williams there at the point of attack. And now it's fourth and goal, and we're under a minute. Great penetration by Kansas State defensive line. Ray Kibble in there, Latui, Adam Davis. Look at the surge in there. I think it was Latui, 92. Yes, it was. At the bottom of that pile that got into the legs of Mike James. But a big stop by Kansas State. Now you've been stuffed two plays in a row. So if you're Kansas State, you got to expect play action pass here from the Miami Hurricanes. Remember last year, Kansas State was 119 in the country against the run. They've done a pretty good job overall against the speed of this Miami offense. Well, nobody gave them credit coming into the game. They were number one defense in the nation. Everybody was saying, you played Eastern Kentucky and Kent State. We're not going to look at the stats. We're not going to believe in you until you actually do something. But they have come in here tonight and gone blow to blow with the Miami Hurricanes and have not flinched at all. No. All right. This is going to decide the game. Lamar Miller has checked into the huddle. And he is going to break the huddle with this Miami offense on fourth and goal with 57 seconds left. I think you got to throw the football here off the play action. The last two plays, you got no movement at all. So Big shift. It's only two guys out on three receivers. Harris rolling to the left, looking to the end zone. He's going to run it. Hit at the goal line, but he got in. Touchdown, Miami. But Ja'Cory Harris willed himself into the end zone. It's fitting that this game should end in this fashion after a hard-fought game. Ja'Cory Harris makes a decision to pull it down. The question is, did he extend the ball over, break the plane Ooh. before his knee came down? And right there you see the ball has clearly not crossed the plane of the goal line, and his knee was down. They are going upstairs for an official review, and you can see it at home, folks. This is going to be overturned. You look at the Kansas State sideline, and they saw the replay on the Jumbotron, and they are fired up. It looks like he came down. Again, Trey Walker, great effort to get over there and stop Ja'Cory Harris, but the knee is clearly down, and that football is not across the goal line. Trey Walker, the weak side linebacker out of Olathe, Kansas, who added 20 pounds to his frame in the offseason, and all 20 came to his advantage on that play right there. He needed all of his force to keep Harris out of the end zone, and it appears that he did. Pat Garvey is our referee awaiting 
the call from upstairs. And this crowd is going to sink when they hear what we think they're going to hear. Well, again, there's got to be conclusive video evidence to overturn the call on the field, which was a touchdown. And um, if you look up conclusive video evidence in the Webster's, I think <laughs> yeah. they'll have a picture of that play. After further review, the runner's knee was down prior to the ball breaking the play of the goal line. Therefore, the result of the play, first down, Kansas State. And that's the right call. Uh, and... For Kansas State to come in here in physical fashion and take this game to the Hurricanes that came up just short in that last play, give them credit. But this is not a piece of cake here. They want to go into victory formation, but to take a knee, I mean, Colin Klein's going to be back in the end zone. What do they do here? Well, they got to hand the football off. You can't take a knee in this situation. The issue is Miami has two timeouts now, so they'll take timeouts after first and second down. And then on third down is when Kansas State will be able to kill the clock. All they got to do is get positive yards and hold on to the football, and they win the game. It might be easier said than done the way this Miami defense has played, especially in the second half. Well, sometimes you will just have the quarterback do a quarterback sneak rather than hand the ball off deeper in the end zone. They may choose to just have Colin Klein lean forward. And Klein does just that, pushing ahead. And there's a Miami timeout. Here are the stops by that Kansas State defense. Very impressive. The yeah, first down, they tried to throw the ball on the edge to Warford. Low throw. Second down, James is stopped. Third down, they tried James again. And Latouille gets into his legs. And then the fourth down stop. Great effort from Trey Walker. Great goal line stand by that Kansas State defense to put him in position to win this football game. You know, that was uh, almost like a turnover. Uh, one of the goals for Kansas State in this game, Brian, you mentioned it, you know, force Miami to turn it over. They got that first half interception. But really, uh, Miami did a pretty good job protecting the ball. But they did turn Miami over on downs at a critical point late in this game. On second down again, it's Klein just lunging ahead, getting a little more breathing room away from that goal line. And the final Miami timeout. All right, here's our good hands play of the game. Let's go back to the Colin Klein hot pass for the touchdown. Yeah, the Tim Tebow pass here. This was a big play in the game. It was the third down, and great hands by Tannehill, the tight end. Looking back into the sun, you can see the shadows there. That was not an easy one-handed catch. But a big play in this game, and Colin Klein has made big play after big play, and it's probably apropos that he'll have to sneak this ball again and take a few more pounding hits and a few more cuts and bruises. Uh, but after this game, he will need an ice tub full up to his <laughs> neck, probably. Yeah. Well, the last time Will Snyder won a game like this on the road, you got to go back a decade. Klein. And Miami cannot stop the clock with a timeout this time. Southern California was defeated by K-State on the road in 2001. He doesn't like going on the road for non-conference games very often. Couldn't get out of this one, but look at this. Kansas State celebrating and it's a not, win in Miami. It's not like Coach Snyder hasn't done it before. 51-5 record in games played in September. A lot of that has to do with the kind of guys that they put on their schedule, but a big win for them on the road. Can they build on this going forward in the Big 12 schedule where they'll have to play the Oklahoma, Oklahoma States, and Texas, and A&M? So I'll give them credit. Once again, our final score, Kansas State 28, Miami 24. Bill Snyder and the crew heading back to Manhattan with smiles on their face. Stay tuned. Louisiana Tech and Mississippi State coming your way. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Brian Greasy, Allison Williams, and our crew, I'm Clay Mathic. We say so long from South Florida. Now we go to Rob Stone with the game between Louisiana Tech and Mississippi State.